it looks as though the valve index had set, teased over the weekend, will ship on June 15, alongside two unreviewed controllers. It's worth noting that Valve has yet to officially confirm the June 15 ship date, headset or controllers yet, but based on a teaser image, more information can be expected in May. Based on screenshots, grabbed by Vari 064 on Twitter, the Valve Index will ship with the headset, integrated headphones, power adapter, regionalized power adapter plugs, two face gaskets, Arrow on the right, and a cleaning cloth. The Valve Index controllers, on the other hand, are shrouded in mystery in terms of its design. A blank screenshot accompanies the currently better Steam page for the product. Aside from some hardware specifications, Sniper Elite Town Strange Brigade Developer Rebellion has acquired Yorkshire based studio TikTok games for an undisclosed fee. TikTok will become Rebellion's fourth United Kingdom studio, joining Rebellion, Liverpool and Rebellion Warwick as sister studios to the company's headquarters in Oxford, and will be known as Rebellion North moving forward. For those unfamiliar with TikTok, the company has recently worked on a couple of Rebellion titles, including Road Trooper Redux and the Switch version of the ATT and Lizzie or any Gold Edition. Bringing more great people to the company is a great way to start 2019, said Rebellion CEO and co-founder Jason Kingsley OBE in a press release. The company continues to grow and it's important we bring in the right people as part of that process. We have worked with the team at TikTok Games for a while now. And we know we will continue to prosper as Rebellion North. In advance of the recent Game Awards, BYOWERBROUGHT in a few journalists for a quick presentation discussing the story of its upcoming cooperative of PGA and THEM, as BioWare readies to launch a major new universe. We had questions about the future of BioWare as a studio at the meeting. Game director Sean Warner, under that producer Michael Gamble, made a pitch for what the game's multiplayer story experience would be like, explaining how players would be given private opportunities to advance the narrative while still going on missions with their friends. We were able to sit down with John Warner to discuss the evolution and development of Fathom and learn more about how the company is shifting into a new world of RPG design. Edited for clarity, so as a group, we wanted to go after some new challenges. We know that we wanted to start telling stories in a more social way, and that was going beyond our previous efforts at multiplayer like Mass Effect 3 on the Dragon Age Inquisition. Right off the bat, we know we wanted to create something that was going to be a little bit different from the start. We know we wanted it to be a co-op experience. We wanted people to play together and be able to enjoy a bioware setting for an extended period of time. This were the goals, the big tent poles that drove our development. Honestly, the first thing that really jumped out at me from our prototype was flight. We played around with it, had lots of different aspects to it, but having that feeling of being able to get to a point in the world and jump off a cliff on the fly was like, oh my god, this is this is amazing. And then you kind of look around side to your side. This is something no one else is doing either. It was magical right off the bat. Our engineers, our animators, they were just eating it up. They dug it, they really dove into that challenge, and, yeah, we can totally do this. A lot of it is respect. Respect for the craft, we are all game players, we are storytellers and we tell stories in different ways. It starts from that position of respect. I want to listen to what you have to say as a developer and whether you are a 3D modeler making terrain. Are you a writer bringing these amazing characters to life? 
I want to hear what your opinion. You are a writer. You have an opinion about how this rifle works, how this piece of gear behaves. I really want to hear about that. Ah,、uh, about how we are casting and who we are casting. You have to start from a position of listening. There is a good structure of peer review that goes on, so you are never really a lone voice. Sometimes somebody will come up to me and say, "I had this idea. I think it should work like that." You think about that, and I try never to either adopt or discard. It's hey, let's sit down and talk about that. Sometimes there's a great reason for it, and you go, "Yeah, that would be really cool." And we do our best to make sure that gets adopted or changed. Ah,、uh, focus whatever the case may be. But again, it has to be a conversation. Where are you coming from with this feedback? And what do you want out of it? Sometimes it's my job to draw the box on the sandbox and say, "This is the sandbox we are playing in, and this idea is outside of the sandbox, so we probably will not do it this time. But maybe that is an idea for the next game. Part of it is my job to do that. That way we come to a place of understanding and agreement. It can be challenging. I think there is one aspect of that which is very personal. It's not just our coworkers. Often times they are our friends. Often times you go through a lot of challenging circumstances together. You draw closer together. It's always hard to see somebody move on to that next opportunity, that next thing. I think that one of the ways that you do it is when people move on and choose to go to that next challenge. Again, you are always respectful about that. It's not, oh well, we did not need him anyway. Oh, we did not need her anyway. It's always being respectful and saying they chose to move on. I wish them the best of luck, and to be genuine about it. You talk real talk with your teams and your developers. BioWare is an interesting thing because we have had such a stable base. Of people for such a long time, I think BioWare is actually moving towards a more normal model, where turnover is a little bit higher. But I think that's healthy in its own way, and it's normal in its own way. You roll on, you say, "Here's our vision for Anthem. We still believe in it. We feel strong, and players who get their hands on it are believing in it too. And we want you to stay here." And make something amazing with us. We definitely do not want to have a culture of toxicity with our players. Obviously, doing things like allowing missions to be followed at without advice communication, so everyone understands what you are supposed to do without having tight coordination with strangers. That's one important thing. That just from a tactical point of view, we do. The other thing is. We have a great team down in Austin that's been running Star Wars: The Old Republic for a long time, and they have developed a really good set of tools to work with the community and foster good practices and discourage bad practices. And I think we just have to be vocal and transparent about what type of behavior is tolerated and what is not. I think, especially for me, I will speak. Personally, about this far moment, I am at a point in my life where I am not always able to coordinate with friends for a long period of time. We are going to carve out three hours to do this thing together, and we have to coordinate our schedules to get that done. I would much rather be able to go after really challenging content with other players who are trying to do the same thing. And let the software bring us together. That was kind of the general feeling behind that. Let's not cut enough our best content, our most challenging content. In a way, a lot of people cannot get to it. Instead, let's encourage people to be able to get together, go after a challenge, and if they start to become acquaintances, they become friends. Hey, that's awesome. That's great. But let's let that happen. Let's let it happen. Let's see what the players need. A lot of it. Having developed Anthem, 
I feel this acutely. You want your players to have the best personal experience. Well, if we'll let you jump in here with a bunch of random people and you, Rain not really communicating, you might really struggle. But I think you have to respect your players and allow them to try. I think those moments are actually still very much there, and it's the final expression of that friendship, part that relationship. That is the thing that's changed. One of my particular favorite moments in the game is near the end of the critical path. Is a moment where you sit down with Fei and you discuss where you are at, and it's this quiet thing in the back of the fort, and it feels so intensely personal. And by switching over to a first-person camera for our conversations.